Sean Ray here for MuscularDevelopment.com with Sergio Oliva Jr. Sergio, you just got done guest posing with some pretty legendary bodybuilders that are actually headed to the Bodybuilding Hall of Fame, and here you are, the rookie up there, <laughs> off-season, taking your time to make a comeback and all that good stuff. But tell me what it was like, first of all, being up there with Dexter Jackson, Phil Heath, Kai Green. I mean, some of those guys may not be there in a couple short years when you are. Man, it was, it was surreal, and uh, I think, you know, leading up to it, I mean, of course, I was really nervous. I mean, this is a big deal to me. Uh, I'm, it's just guest posing to some people, but to me, like, I'm finally up there with, you know, my idols, and I'm literally the meme of when your idols become your rivals. So uh, it's, it's kind of surreal, um, but, man, I, you know, as soon as I got out there with them, they made me feel so comfortable, and it was so much fun, and the, the audience was just uh, really great. Absolutely, and it seems like yesterday you won the national championships, but, uh, or the USA's. Nationals, Nationals. Um, but it, it seems like a lot, just like yesterday, but now we're moving into starting to do the business. You're now starting to travel. You're working with Labrada Nutrition. You're learning the ropes of being a professional bodybuilder, and it is a grind. And for those athletes out there that don't know, there's a lot expected from you. And so uh, how are you dealing with putting all that stuff into perspective and still having time to do the business of bodybuilding? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, ever since I lifted, started lifting a weight, I mean, I've had, you know, shadows that I got to fill and, and expectations, but you're right. Once you're the national winner, I mean, that's it. I'm, I'm that for life. And I don't know, maybe to some people that's good enough, uh, but to me, I feel like that would be complete failure to only win nationals and you never hear from me ever again. So I want to keep uh, kind of contributing towards the business of bodybuilding, but also for myself. And you really can't know how to deal with things until you, until you deal with them, until they come up. And, you know, you always hear people that deal with problems, you know, behind the the scenes and stuff like that and, it's, and you think about oh when I get my pro card that's ah, not gonna be a big deal I can't wait to when I travel but I mean it's, it's it's hard and it's hard to keep your your social life and your and your personal life uh, together while also traveling and working on the business of bodybuilding well, and you're also learning now in the world of social media I was just I was in the middle of my career when it came out with the boards and all that stuff having to deal with Instagram Twitter Facebook and the bodybuilding boards, you now have another component that you have to deal with in terms of criticism, constructive criticism, and some of it is just brutal. Um, how do you deal with that? Because again, you don't have the time to address all your fans and say, hey, look, I was sick. Hey, I'm, I'm going through a relationship problem. Hey, I'm, I'm struggling financially. Or hey, I've, I've got all these things I'm juggling, yet I still have these commitments to perform. Do you feel even a need to address that? Or you just, you just kind of compartmentalize it and go back to the gym and take it out on the weights? Yeah, I mean, I feel like no matter what I say, it's always going to come off as some kind of excuse or some kind of complaining, and, and I don't want to be that guy. Uh, whatever I'm dealing with, people have dealt with way worse, and, uh, you know, I, I can't grow up in this sport and see the things that I've seen and, and hear the things I've heard and, and then complain about uh, things off stage that I have to deal with. I mean, I, I feel like I can do this, but ultimately it matters what you look like on the day of your competition show, and, and there's no way that there's... It's, it's a possibility that I could show up not my best for that. So, I mean, as long as I can get my life together and kind of get this rolling, uh, I feel like I feel really confident in, uh, in my com competition anyway. Well, so that being said, people want to know where and when are they potentially going to see you back on an IFBB Pro stage competing for the title? Uh, it'll be the New York Pro next year. Uh, so uh, this gives me some time. I, I mean, <laughs> getting up on stage with these guys is easily the most reality check you can get. Uh, so I definitely, want, I definitely want to put some size on, but my whole thing is, and I always tell people, like, whoever I'm up in my lineup in uh, with, there's always a missing person that's up there that I'm actually getting compared to. And that's, that's something that I have to deal with that no one's ever had to deal with. And I'm not complaining, but I still have to try and bring back old school body, and I have to live up to my dad, and I have to also beat the people in the top six that I'm being compared to. So I, I want to do it, and I want to gain the size, and I want to be able to compete with these guys, but I also want to keep uh, old school lines and do it the right way in a slower way. Very well put. Very encrypted as well. He's talking about Sergio Oliva, the myth, three-time Mr. Olympia. Big shoes to follow, follow him, but you're making your own tracks, and you're doing a very good job. Sponsored athlete, won the Nationals the hard way, and uh, taking a year off to come back. So we're going to keep our eye out on Sergio Oliva Jr., but for right now, we're here at the Pittsburgh Pro Championships with all the bodybuilders getting ready for the Mr. Olympia. For Sergio, I'm Sean Ray, MuscularDevelopment.com.